The ecosystem of our planet is so fragile and vulnerable. We realize this only when more atmospheres species of animals and plants disappear from their diversified fauna and flora. Natural disasters and global climate changes are not the only reason. A human being increasingly becomes responsible for the biological species' extinction. The modern civilization is sweeping away entire climatic zones, destroying forests and rivers, draining marshes and irreparably harming natural ecosystems. According to the UN statistics, 4,749 species of living organisms are on the verge of extinction. The share of endangered breed constitutes 40% of the entire diversified world of nature. A snow leopard representing the feline family is at risk too. There were several tens or thousands of them in the mountains of Central and South Asia a hundred years ago. There was counted about 400 specimens nowadays. The habitat of snow leopards spread over the highlands in more than 10 countries. Therefore, the rare cat preservation problems are being solved due to the joint efforts of those states where snow leopards live. This was stated by the participants of the global conference devoted to problems of snow leopards protection, which was held in the capital of Kazakhstan, Nur Sultan. For the first time, zoologists and experts from 12 countries where snow leopards live gathered at one table. These people speak different languages, but they perfectly understand each other. They are here to discuss a strategy for preserving the rarest animal. Snow leopard is one of the state symbols of Kazakhstan. Its image is on the municipal arms of the city of Almaty. It has great public significance, reflects the natural and cultural heritage of the Kazakh people. Snow leopard is considered as the symbol of courage, wisdom and strong power. This mountain leopard is listed in the International Red Book under the category of rare and endangered species. It is protected by the law of those countries where it lives. Protection of the predator's population has become an important task for many international organizations, including the Snow Leopard Foundation. Why did you decide to protect the snow leopards in our country? It is a very noble animal. I learned that snow leopards are on the verge of extinction. Particularly, there are only a few dozens of them in Kazakhstan. There were 200 to 300 specimens 20, 30 years ago. We observe a drastic fall in numbers. Therefore, the idea to establish this fund for support and conservation, first of all, and growth of a number of specimens, if possible, has a reason. There are methods, there is a scientific rationale that it is possible to implement. Such event is being held for the first time. I believe this is a very important event, since it is the exchange of experience between scientists based on available data. It will help us find the best ways how to save the snow leopard. Famous scientists, zoologists, representatives of reputable international organizations, including experts from the United Nations Development Program, UNDP, World Wide Fund for Nature, WWF, and the International Union for Conservation of Nature and Natural Resources, IUCN, gathered in the capital of Kazakhstan. The establishment of a global United Information Center designed to combine all available scientific and statistical data on snow leopards is one of the conference's initiatives. And the main thing is to organize educational work among local residents and to collect data on animals inhabiting the region.
Another specific project is the establishment of the International Genetic Laboratory for Ounces Survey. The leopard is a predator, but it cannot protect itself. Only people can do this. In this regard, Yurjan, could you please tell me what actions have been envisaged by the Foundation? What is the first step you are going to do? Last year, we set the goal to promote a breeding nursery or a rehabilitation center two in one. We started implementing this task. We held negotiations with the relevant ministry concerning land allocation. Later, thanks to international experts, we continued this activity and took an important direction, which is to conduct a monitoring study of the Almaty region, that is the Transali Alatau Tian Shan Mountains. We would like to examine the exact population of snow leopards in these mountains. This work can be enhanced throughout the country. Generally, the goal of today's conference is to share this experience all over the world. Considering that the number of snow leopards around the world is not so large, it is possible to protect each specimen. И учитывая, что численность снежного барса по всему миру не такая большая, то можно, в принципе, защитить каждую особь. About 130 snow leopards inhabit Kazakhstan. However, this figure needs to be clarified. There are two regions which are included in the list of the most significant habitats of this animal in the world. They are the Jangarian Alatau and the northern Tian Shan. There are 11 national parks and nature reserves within the area of snow leopards distribution in Kazakhstan. Two of them are Sairamugam National Park and Aksu Jabagli Nature Reserve, which became a part of the UNESCO World Heritage Site, the Western Tian Shan, in 2016. Participants of the conference discussed the prospects of creating a center for snow leopard breeding and adaptation. A land plot of 500 hectares was selected in the territory of the Ilelatal National Nature Park to build a breeding nursery. Our opponents bring up fears that it is impossible to construct a rehabilitation center within the area of 500 hectares. It is also impossible to keep a snow leopard so that it is fed, healthy and doesn't go anywhere because the food supply will be undercut. The Institute of Zoology provided the biological justification, saying that it is quite possible to place a huge enclosure in this territory. Snow leopards will be in the environment close to natural, where the food will be supplied in advance. These are badgers, mammoths, birds, red deer, roe deer and other hoofed mammals. One need to monitor both a number of snow leopards and food reserves. These things are real in order not to allow the imbalance. How are wild animals counted? One of the methods is counting the traces of the animal's vital activity. These are paw prints, urinary marks, excrements and scraping. The accuracy of the estimate is very approximate with this method. The most accurate counting method is a camera trap. They are installed in crossing places for snow leopards. Pictures are analyzed and each specimen is identified by the unique location of spots on its fur. In total, more than 150 camera traps are used in Kazakhstan to study leopards. Presently, the fund has purchased a significant number of camera traps. We have set up a team of young hereditary scientists studying snow leopards and allocated certain funds to compensate the work of the Institute of Zoology. Together with these 10 scientists, we examined all the gorges of the Almaty region, from the Fabrichny village in Kaskilan district to Cherin. Then we collected all the materials about snow leopard's life and conducted genetic research.
Another problem that the conference participants raised was how to solve the conflict between snow leopards and local residents. The ounce is a predator and it can attack livestock, and in rare cases it can even become a threat to humans. In order to prevent this, one needs to take care of hoofed mammals, that is the main food for snow leopards. There are many ways in the world practice that can change the relationship between humans and wild cats. For example, one can keep compensation herds in mountain villages financed by nature protection funds. One can create compensation herds. On the other hand, it's important to appoint all people of these villages to manage them. The internal management plays a significant role. No external management should be. Nobody deceives the neighbors. Moreover, one can attract people to assist in snow leopard's care, for example, provide some monitoring, set traps, etc. This is exactly what we do in Kyrgyzstan. We attract local residents to produce toys showing snow leopards and sell them to tourists. At some point, women demanded men to stop the illegal hunt, and not for leopards, but for angulates. They understood that this is not good for leopards. There will be fewer tourists and fewer customers. Snow leopards are the magnificent inhabitants of high mountains in the Central and Southern Asia. They know no bounds and move along the ecological corridors of 12 countries. Protection of snow leopards and mountain ecosystems is an integral part of the economic, cultural and environmental human welfare. This conclusion was made by the participants of the Global Conference in the capital of Kazakhstan. There are the same problems around the world today. Until we teach people how to live along with a snow leopard, not to hunt wild ungulates, we do not teach them to understand that a snow leopard is a part of nature and it is not a harmful predator. Another large-scale project received the support of the World Wide Fund for Nature. This is the program of the Caspian Tiger reintroduction into Kazakhstan. At the beginning of the last century, the Caspian Tiger freely lived in the riparian forests of the Ili River Delta and the southern Balhash area. Uncontrolled hunting, reduction of food supply, plowing of fertile lands led to extinction of this predator. For the first time, the idea to revive the tiger population in places of their primordial habitat was brought to consideration 10 years ago. The Ilebalhash National Nature Reserve was created on an area of 415,000 hectares last year. We went there to see how the preparations were being carried out for the Caspian Tiger reintroduction into the southern shore of the Lake Balhash. The preparation took eight years to launch the National Nature Reserve into operation. Such difficult problems cannot be solved overnight. Now we are crossing the border. It is not fenced and there are boom barriers at the entrance and exit. This nature reserve is located on the border of a desert and wetland landscape zones. Thousands of channels, lakes, islands create a unique ecosystem. Here the migratory routes of semi-aquatic birds are passing. There are a lot of fish, animals, hundreds of plant species. Thick reeds and riparian forests will become a reliable sanctuary for the Caspian tigers. The area is desolate and wild. This nature reserve was created to preserve the unique nature of the southern Belhash and the Ili River Delta. The coastal line of Balhash is just a few kilometers from here. It extends over hundreds of kilometers. Reed beds. Do you believe that tigers will live there? Yes, we do. This is exactly the place originally inhabited by the Bactrian deer, and this is the habitat for the tiger. An expert from the Far East came here. 
He was examining the entire territory for several days and concluded that this is a great place. It should be convenient for a tiger. There are no chances to return a Caspian tiger. However, a Siberian tiger will take its place in the southern Balhash area. Scientists have proven that this subspecies is genetically identical to Caspian tigers. In the 20th century, the several isolated populations disappeared, but the subspecies remained, and now it is possible to restore it in those places where it once lived. When will the animals be reintroduced here and how many of them? The tiger reintroduction program is under the governmental supervision. First, a memorandum on the Caspian tiger reintroduction in the Republic of Kazakhstan was signed in September between the World Wide Fund for Nature and the Committee for Wildlife and Forestry at the Ministry of Agriculture. According to the program, the animals will be relocated here in five, six years. We, the employees of the nature reserve, will do our best to supply food and other necessary stuff. I think three or four specimens can be brought here in five, six years. Initially, tigers will live in an enclosure and after some adaptation they will be released into the wild. Deer, wild boars, goited gazelles and other ungulates are the food supply for tigers. One adult tiger needs 50 ungulates a year. If there is enough food, a predator will never move to a village, it will not need livestock. However, locals are fearful of the return of the owner of the riparian forests in the Balhash area. Wild beast is unpredictable sometimes. Let's imagine a villager is in trouble because a tiger beat his cow. So what? Will he hate tigers? How can the state resolve the situation? This could happen. Therefore, we have to prepare a compensation herd before a tiger comes. The herd will not be under the nature reserve control. The locals will undertake the responsibility to manage the herd. The aged people will rule everything. The herd will grow. If a resident declares that a cow has died, he's come to the elders and get compensation for his loss. The local population, Kazakhs, peacefully coexisted with tigers when it inhabited the region. People respected him, and tigers in turn treated people correspondingly. Riparian forests and animals are being restored in the territory of the nature reserve in a buffer zone in the Koroi and Balhash wildlife reserves. Huntsmen provide them with additional feeding and monitor their behavior. Here are the traces of a boar family. That night they came to a feed station. Camera traps recorded 18 species. See, these tracks are fresh. They are just covered with sand. Boars come every night. Everything is trampled here. This is the territory where wild boars constantly move. This camera trap is recording everything within 15 to 20 meters radius. The sound is recorded too. The camera works around the clock. This is a very effective way to observe the wildlife. There was an incident in the Alelatao National Nature Reserve last year. A poacher who hunted for the Siberian ibex saw such a trap and took it with him. He took it off, put in his backpack and fled the scene. But another camera trap fixed him. The photo was taken and posted through social media. It was not difficult to identify the violator and find him within an hour. He was immediately recognized. The man admitted that he was guilty. Then he paid a fine and returned the camera trap. Therefore, I don't advise poachers to trifle with it. Last year, five red deer were brought from the Sirdarya Turkestan National Nature Park to the nature reserve. They were placed in a spacious enclosure where sexal tamarisk and grass grow. 
but water is imported. This is the Holy of Holies of the Ile Balhash Reserve, where Bacter and deer are kept. A so-called soft release will take place in a few days. The gates of this enclosure will be opened and the animals will be released into the wild. Let's go there until this has happened. After 115 years, red deer appeared again in their historical homeland. Before releasing into the wild, the animals need special preparation. They must get used to each other and form a herd, and also find the best food and watering places. Specialists of the nature reserve closely monitor the movement of deer. Satellite collars are used for these purposes, camera traps and feed stations are installed at the place of their release. The road was long, the area is not inhabited. Finally we arrived and now we are in the enclosure. Why did you choose this place for Bactra and deer? It took us much time to find this place. We conducted a scientific expedition here last year and drove 1400 kilometers through the reserve territory to choose a location for a breeding nursery. This place was chosen because of good food supply and vegetation, where deer can hide against the heat or strong wind in winter. We built a 10 hectares enclosure last year. It was sponsored by the World Wide Fund for Nature. Now I see water, feed, hay. Can wolves approach the place? There were some concerns. We built an enclosure and fenced it with red stripes around the entire perimeter. Wolves were afraid of them. We also pulled on nets and red ropes. When we had brought deer last December, a lot of wolves came up. They constantly howled. We were afraid that they would approach, but they didn't. It's quiet here now. There are eight patrol cars, tractors, a boat, snowmobiles, fire engines and other necessary equipment at the disposal of the Nature Reserve employees. The territory is well guarded. Checkpoints are located around the perimeter of the reserve. A ranger center has been built for patrol crews to have a rest after the raids. Inspectors are on duty around the clock. A modern solar battery allows the post to function on a continuous basis. Staff is here around the year. There are refrigerators working, electricity and communication facilities. The nature reserve doesn't depend on power lines, which are not available here. The nearest one is 70 kilometers away. Nevertheless, the main question is how will the local population get along with the predatory neighbor? The population of the Balhash district of Almaty region exceeds 30,000 residents. In recent decades, the economic and environmental situation in the region has worsened. The lack of jobs caused the massive poaching. Therefore, the attention was paid to the development of small business in order to overcome economic problems in the southern Balhash region. Thus, the first residents of the Karoi village could start up their own businesses with the help of the Small Grants program under the World Wide Fund for Nature. After having established the Ile Balhash Nature Reserve, they began to create jobs here. So the first hotel was built in the village. Let's ask the manager how the idea to set up a hotel came. There were no hotels in our village and visitors didn't know where to stay. When representatives of the nature reserve told us that they were going to give out grants, we were excited and decided to make a hotel. 
We rebuilt a temporary construction, invested a lot of money. And now the hotel is ready to receive guests. However, Mirambek Koshenov has received a half of the grant so far. The remaining amount will be allocated when grantors make sure that the money was used for its intended purpose. A modest but comfortable hotel is ready to receive guests. Almas, the son of Mayor Beck and a well-known entrepreneur in the village, is in charge for the hotel. The Kashanovs believe that Karoi can become a tourist center in Balhash. Another grant was awarded to the Alambayev's family, who decided to grow geese. At first, the farmers didn't believe that they could receive a free aid. Having successfully passed the competitive selection, they purchased 150 geese. Look, what frisky geese! They are white and well fed. We don't yet know what is going on under the water. The farmers also grow cups. Small fry of these valuable fish swim here. We obtain two in one. Let's wait for the result in full. Now Kamshatu Spanbaeva and Ardak Alimbaev own a small poultry farm. Next year they intend to increase the goose flock up to 500 specimens. According to Zhildiz Minbaev, a goose breeder who cares for poultry on a daily basis, geese eat a sack of wheat per day, which is bought in a neighboring village. The poultry find a lot of food in the pond. Thus, the farm products will be tasty and organic. The Ili River Delta, big lake system, one can breed here thousands, even hundreds of thousands of geese, turkeys and ducks and tigers will be released about 70 kilometers from here on the south coast of Balhash. So people can do their business far from tigers. The aim is to minimize the presence of people in the nature reserve. The World Wide Fund for Nature is supporting residents of the Ile Balhash Nature Reserve. Small grants are issued to villages whose projects help restore forests, wildlife and fish stocks. Work with the population is an important educational task of the Ile Balhash Nature Reserve. It aims to involve local residents in the process of nature conservation. Therefore, rangers and inspectors are recruited from local residents. Young people are assigned to study at agricultural universities to graduate as forestry specialists. This is the way to create sustainable environmental management mechanisms. Is it possible to change the situation so that people take care of nature? It seems to me that it is possible, although not right away. Let's start bringing up at mother's knees from kindergartens. We conduct lectures and discussions in schools. For example, we distribute small sculptures of deer and kids paint them. Also, we planted small pine trees in glasses and gave them to school children. They grow them at home. When the trees grow up, the pupils plant them near their houses. Local residents understand that the reintroduction of wild animals will change their life for the better. There will be developed eco-tourism, incomes will grow and jobs will appear. And the most important fact is that the nature will be revived. A new life of the Balhash area begins with small deeds, with the construction of harmonious relations between the nature and the human being. And this will be the greatest success of nature protection in Kazakhstan.